Melpignano is situated in the middle of the province of Lecce and it is one of the municipalities that form the Greek-speaking linguistic area known as Grecia Salentina. In the last years Melpignano has become famous thanks to the mega concert The Night of the Taranta and it is part of the authentic villages of Italy and virtuous municipalities associations. Every year thousands of visitors are drawn to Melpignano by the authentic beauty of the historical center with its artistic monuments as well as the cultural vitality and warm hospitality of its inhabitants. For centuries the agricultural economy has driven Melpignano society as evidenced by the vast fields of olive trees. These groves blend synergistically with the rural architectural, typical of the peasant civilization, such as dry stone walls and Pajara stone huts. In these large green spaces, one can still admire important structures linked to the ancient agricultural society. An example is the farmhouse San Loi or San Teligio, dating back to 1576. On the facade you can still see clues of typical defensive fortifications, such as the characteristic matriculations placed above the main entrance. Near the building, one can also find a dovecote tower used in the past for the meat supply and also guano gathering, a valuable natural fertilizer. The countryside presents many stone quarries situated in the direction of Corsi. They are known in local slang as tagliate and they have been used for centuries for the extraction of lecce limestone the raw material used for the most important Salentinian architectural structures and sculptures. This type of stone is of calcareous origin and it belongs to the Miocene period when millions of years ago the Salento was partially submerged by the sea. The ease of processing this limestone allowed the great flowering of the Lecese Baroque in the Salentinian territory. It is not a coincidence that this Leccese limestone is the leading feature of the historical center of Melpignano, evidenced by elegant and sophisticated Baroque patterns. The close relationship between art and territory is visible in the exquisite architecture which appears to visitors in a wide variety of buildings of different eras and styles. Treglia Palace is the essence of the 16th through 18th century architecture and is characterized by a large arch decorated with palmet and flowers and by the adjacent oratory of St. Michael where you can find a prized statue of the saint. The Porto of Veris Palace is a rococo style, elegantly sculpted in the 18th century by the refined hand of the stone cutter Emanuele Orfano from Alessano. Walking through the historical center, one will notice the care and attention paid to the protection and promotion of cultural heritage. Here it is possible to immerse oneself in history and tradition, landing squarely in the center of the region's Greek heritage. Some Renaissance buildings, decorated with restrained elegance and ingenuity, stand near St. George's Square. It is highly likely that, in the past, these buildings were used as workshops. The square, situated on the peripheral side of the historical center, has for centuries been the pulsing heart of the local economy. Typical perimeter porticos enclose the square. They are an example of the 16th century mercantile architecture, restored over the centuries with various improvements and renovations. 
The construction of the square was commissioned by the humanist Niccolò Mariorano from Melpignano in order to host and organize the activities of merchants who drove the town's economy. In the past, traders came from all over the Italian peninsula, in particular from Naples, Bari and Lecce, to sell fabrics of different types, such as silk or wool, in this square. The facade of the town's principal church, dedicated to St. George and built in the first half of the 15th century, dominates the architectural landscape. This building has undergone many modifications and changes through the centuries. It represents a synthesis of different artistic styles, which range from the Renaissance period to that of the end of the 18th century. At the center of the lunette of the 16th century portal, one finds the Holy Knight George intent on attacking a dragon, the symbol of evil. The interior of the church has three naves and side altars. Looking at the decorations, one notices several renovations carried out in the 18th century. Next to the parish church, there's the lovely church of the Madonna of the Assumption, formerly dedicated to the saints Rocco and Sebastian. The chapel is adorned by the gracious portal sculpted by the master Placido Buffelli from Alessano. for the oldest feudal defensive structures, the palace of the Marquis Melpignano is the result of an architectural reconfiguration carried out in the 17th century, which led to the transformation of the fortress into a noble palace. As stated on the inscription placed on the strip at the top of the façade, the construction of the public building was promoted by the feudal lord Giorgio Castriota. The upper floors were designated for the personal use of the feudal lords, while the lower floors were the seat of the baronial court for the administration and execution of juridical matters. The only remains of the ancient manor are the moat and the imposing southern defensive walls marked by the towers and a guard walkway. Inside the palace you can enjoy the lovely Italian-style garden, enhanced by the presence of a pergola and a magnificent architectural elements, which offer visitors a charming view. The palace was purchased by the municipality of Melpignano in the mid-1990s. At the moment it is undergoing restoration work in order to make the palace and the garden usable. Visitor information are located at the tourist house, situated in Via Roma, in the very heart of the town. In the past the building was a warehouse, used for tobacco storage and processing. The tourist house offers visitors options for learning about the cultural heritage of the town for example booking a guided tour or to discover interesting facts and information about the area. The building offers a comfortable atmosphere 
and houses different cultural activities such as laboratories and conferences. Moreover, in the main room one can admire the old municipal cloak, recently restored for the enjoyment of the public. The presence of ancient humans in the Melpignano area is witnessed by the existence of megalithic monuments found throughout the countryside and the town itself. Placed in the industrial area of Melpignano, the Menir Calamauri is 3.70 meters high and it has a base of 50 centimeters in width. On its surface there are various cruciform engravings. The Menir Lama is situated in the town center, in the Silo Square, close to the 15th century chapel dedicated to Saint Anthony the Abbot. It is 4.20 meters high, with a base of 30 centimeters. The Minonna estate gave its name to the Monimus Menir, situated outside the town. It is 2.80 meters high with a base of 50 centimeters. The Cineo di Tamburino farmhouse houses the homonymous menhir. It is currently 1.90 meters high with a base of 50 centimeters. In Memorial Park you can find an ancient monolith used in the past as a decorative column and known as Menir Osanna. At the top there is a decorative capital surmounted by a cross, while the civic coat of arms of the Melpignanese Universitas, a pine tree planted on a honeycomb, is engraved on the base. The cultural heritage of Melpignano is varied and it makes the landscape interesting because it is characterized by typical old rural structures, a result of the ancient labor of the peasant civilization. Situated close to the cemetery of Melpignano, the small church of Santa Maria Maddalena was built in 1661 on the ruins of a former sacred building. The cult of Saint Mary Magdalene became stronger around 1656 when the inhabitants relied on the protection of the saint during the plague which struck the whole kingdom of Naples. In fact, on the high altar you can find the statues of Saint Lazzaro and Saint Oronzo invoked by the faithful to protect them from the epidemic disease such as the plague. Even today the building preserves its grace, witnessing the religious devotion of the inhabitants of Melpignano for its penitent saint. Augustinian convent and the adjoining church of the Carmine are among the most emblematic monuments of the 17th century Salentinian architecture and art. The building stands outside the ancient walls near the residential area. It was constructed in 1638 by the famous headmaster Francesco Manuli from Codigliano d'Otranto. The patterns on the façade of the Church of the Carmine are very impressive, evidence of the great skill of the Leccese stonecut Giuseppe Zimbalo, known as the Gypsy. It is a mixture of geometrical and floral harmonies, animated by an intense baroque dynamism. 
For centuries, the convent complex was inhabited by the Augustinian friars, established in Melpignano since the 16th century. The convent house was one of the most important in Apulia. It dealt with education of young people and with the Latinization and Romanization process of their religious worship. Suppressed in 89 after the application of the Napoleonic law, the convent became available for public use. The convent underwent restoration for conservation purposes and the complex once flourishes in a renewed cultural context. Every summer, the area in front of the convent becomes the place for the monumental concert, the Night of the Taranta, the most famous music festival of the Salento.